to today's video. Today we're going to show a little bit how to use Outrix to build some JSON files. Because nowadays semi-structured data comes quite a lot for both query the data and interactive with web service. So you can see on the screen, it's one of the sample file uh, that's relevant to the Google Calendar API. We have two parts I want to demo. One is a nested JSON file field. Second, we can see on top attendees, it's actually a list. So that's a two, uh, a bit more complicated structure when the uh, on top of the basic JSON file, we can see how we can create this thing with our tricks. For the workflow, uh, we can run it. We have two inputs. So the context, we can say you have some events. In my sample bulk of data, we have two events with some kind of dates. Attendees, because it's for Google Calendar, then most often you probably have people's name and their corresponding emails. Let's see how we can create those structures for the files. The first thing, let's actually introduce a bit on the, the JSON file. For that, Outrix now that we have a JSON file and JSON view. Most often you have API data download, so you got to pass data out. So JSON pass is quite often used. Today, we're going to do JSON build. For JSON file, you got to have a key value pair first. At the moment, we, we have button. The data is still in a tablet structure. We want to pivot the data a bit. So to pivot the data, let's drag uh, transpose. So it's from white to long format. First, we can select our group by field, say for each event, for each character, the information we want to pivot. If we run the data, we can see uh, what we have. We have name value pair, uh, so key uh, key value pair. So of the key, we have character name as a well, and the key name is a, uh, sorry email is a second key. And then we have course corresponding value field. With those, we can actually start to build a very simple JSON file. Drag it into JSON build. What we have, the interface tool is very simple. Most often, what we're going to use is to do with the string field on the top. There are some cases uh, you want, particular for a number or Boolean field, you may want to handle a different data type. So first, because we pivoted, so we do have a name, go for the name of colon, value, we have a value column. We can select group by field. So for us, say we still want to build a nested JSON file. Actually, let's not select that. Let's actually do the most basic JSON build. If we select, we can see we have a single output. If we put a browser tool on there, we can have a look what does this give us. So copy data. Let's go to VS Code. Let's show copy everything in. Format our file bit, make it easy to see. So now, in the most basic sense, the JSON build uh, take every single row you have, then it just adds in into a single curly bracket as a JSON object. To us, clearly, we're not exactly interested to have character name, email in a single uh, JSON object. We want to do, want to break that up. So we can implement a group by 10 on it. So go to our JSON file. So we're going to do is for each event, for each person, each character, we're going to have their own individual JSON. And once we group by, then we should expect uh, now we can see, ooh, that's a mistake. Because yeah, now, if we select output and go to VS Code, copy paste, format bit, this becomes more uh, individual link to the field, which we can later on use to embed for a more nested structure. Uh, for the name, email pair, we're going to build is a list. Now we have our basic JSON file. Then let's look, go to the next step, which we want to do a nested JSON. So we want to wrap one JSON object within another 
object. Uh, on top, we can see uh, we have two events. I let me just copy some of the tools I built already. And talk about it. The intention for the tool is to make uh, some ERT selections. I've created a few more fields. So what we're going to have, we're going to have a daytime and a time zone as a pair. So if you remember from the start of the video, that's one of the JSON object. So you have the two goes a pair, then we want the finishing time for the events as a second pair for the JSON. The way to actually construct uh, the nested JSON, the JSON build to itself does not have a default to tell you which hierarchy to choose, so you got to add in some indication. Here we use is a dot notation. So you can see I have my start date, start time with a dot. So when the JSON file start building, it will follow the path with a dot. Every time you see a dot, it breaks down into one lower level. With that, let's actually do a similar thing. Let's create a key value pair. Let's pivot it first. So once you for each event, uh, each event ID for other field, we want to pivot it. Then let's just drop a JSON build within first. So we should have name value pair after pivoting. Select a group by turn. Uh, let's add a browse. In the very end. This is wrong. See the results. So first we can have a quick glance. What we have, we have pivot data. If we form a JSON file, let's select a data. Go to VS Code again. Oh, I think I select too many files. So now you see with the dot notation. What we have, we have our start or end, so we can select whatever the key uh, characters you want to use. And the start and end just because it will fit in the Google documentation for the calendar API. But in between, depends on the item you have. JSON build with uh, to help you to automatically nest the structure. Quite handy. Uh, one thing we got to notice: the order matters. So for example, when we pivot the data, even though we have a dot notation to help it to go down one level, F would say we just change the notation. So you can see, so rather than have a start, start as a pair, we do start and start and again. What happens? It actually mess up the data structure. So the tool is probably cannot recognize as this. If we use that without even going to the code, we can see start and start, even though it's a character. So, in the back end, I think the two probably done is at a row level, uh, do some grouping factor rather than read the literal string start and end. So, it creates four individual JSON file as a single item rather than the two pairs of nested JSON. So do be careful with how you construct things. Probably when you want to do pivoting, was why I would probably do a single sort within the select, make sure all your hierarchy turn is done in the correct orders. So the third stage, let's talk about list. The difficulty at the moment is Outrix does not have a list as a default uh, object type. What we have is we have a string type. So we need to do some kind of our own custom transformation to handle this list. With the example list, uh, if we look at the initial build, for different events, we do have a bunch of people going to the single events. So for group by at events level, we want to make all the, the JSON object. So the name and email pair into a list. It's not a different JSON, but depends on the API and the points, depends on the database in the back end, they request different data structure. 
So to create a list, it's a square brackets. With square brackets, what we could do is we can introduce the square brackets ourselves. The quickest way to do is uh, concatenation. So we can select character events, let's group by we do not want to group by, by the character. We want to group by events at the events level. The JSON we built before we can do is in the string type, we have a concatenation. Default uh, is separation by comma, is what we want, yes. But we do want to have a starting and ending bracket on the whole concatenated string. So we have to add the dot. So we can see we should have probably two rows for each event. For one row, on the start, we have a square brackets. Everything else is just a long string. It's all good. So we can proceed to actually see, OK, let's join the data together. Let's see how we can form the final results. Let's have a look at the next part we're going to do is we're going to join up our data set. Within the data, we're going to do a join field. Let's drag here. So on the top for the events, I'm going to see probably from the select. Then in the bottom side, I'm going to have my JSON. So you see, I'm not using the nested structure on the top. So I want to skip that first because we want to create the final JSON at the same level at last. First, we are grouped by the events. So we want to increase at events level. Uh, we don't need too many events ID. The JSON is fun. We can call it, give a different name. Let's say attendees. That's the required field name. If we run the field, so we should expect uh, still two rows of data but with the different colors. We we'll have uh, probably changed the order a bit. Let me move the end time after the start time. Attendee list, uh, let's move after the events, events ID, sure. So everything else, it's going to be rings and repeat. We want to pivot the data first. First, we want to group at events level. Uh, we do have an events name, so let's keep events name, events ID. They're the same thing. Start, start, end, end, attendee. In a good order, that's good. Let's just add a JSON, build in end as well. To take some time to build it. So we have a name, we have a value, we we'll group by events, events ID, drag a browse to an end. Around the workflow. Let's copy that into VS Code. It's easier to see. Hmm. Did I still select the? Uh... Oh, let me just select the correct field. Let us go to the whole thing. We notice end and the start is what we intended. They appear in the correct nested form. But attendees is not exactly correct. The format is a bit off. The reason for that, because Outreach does, as I mentioned before, Outreach does not have a list as a default data type within the two. So what we have is when we run the first nested JSON, we do have our scrap bracket create and the list created for us, but it's saved as a string. When we run the JSON, the JSON to will wrap uh, another string type to, for, uh, to cast everything as a string type because we select only string at the moment. There with that, you have a repeat on the double quotes. So uh, backslash is introduced to handle the escaping character. Then there's a final quote, double quotes outside the square bracket to make sure wrap the string. There's no easy, there's no direct way of do within the tool itself. So in the future implementation, we're probably going to see some kind of easier way within the tool. 
But the structure of so far is quite straightforward, so it isn't too bad. We can just use a formula tool to handle this particular field. What we can do, we can drag and replace. The first thing we can do is to replace all the escaping character. So do be careful with the data set. If you do have backslash within the original data set, you probably need to think some other way to handle it. The quickest way, so we're going to replace any backslash we see with no space. So that should help us to remove all those individual backslashes. We have no uh, backslash within the origin data set. It shouldn't affect the data structure. Second thing, let's actually just do quickly together is to handle the outer double quotes. So copy paste. I guess for the case, uh, you can use some regex, but I think this is a bit overkill. Because what we have is we have a double quotation, so I use my single quote as the because a string. If you have your data as a single quote on the tool, try to use a double quote instead. So what we're going to do, we're going to remove that double quote. Now you see here I ask specifically for double quotes with open square bracket as a pair together. Because if you just only remove double quotes, there's a lot more you will remove, which is not what you intended. We did it at the front. We can do the same thing for the back. So for the back, what we have is we have a closing square bracket with a double quote in the end. Remove that, we just replace it with single square brackets. If we run the two, Uh, so engine. That's fine. Uh, let's copy the select tool. Let's go to VS Code. Can you shift? Let's form. Now, already we can see it should be to the top. Yes, with the correct removed character. It doesn't break the data. That's why formatting where VS Code can recognize at least that indicate we did it correctly. The JSON file is in the recognizable format. So you have individual nested object pair. All those pair you can control, they belong to a single list, which is that list attendees who can close bracket. And this is how you can use Outrix to actually build quite complicated uh, JSON structure. Of course, if you have a, uh, a lot more depths or as a data type, particularly if you have some kind of list, you may need a little bit more formula tools involved. Nevertheless, it's actually quite compact way to be this on workflow and start to programmatically trigger the events. Okay, and that's all for today. Thank you for watching.